Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome once again to uh, update us what's going on here. And there are, of course, we're very close to having the Mass here this weekend. So lots going on, and uh, we'll get to it. But first, as always, uh, we celebrated one of the saints yesterday, and I try to remember, I'm losing who that memorial was, but his quote was that you do nothing without prayer. So we'll begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for helping us get through this period without the Mass. And we thank you for now, this time that's about to happen where we'll be able to gather together as a parish community and be able to celebrate you in the Mass and receive your precious body. We ask you, Lord, for those who are still struggling with health issues or with anxiety or loneliness or isolation, that you be with them. And for those who are struggling with maybe going out into public, that we all take care of each other, that we stay cautious. And as we gather together, we make sure that we care and love each other. We ask this, Lord, everything, always, in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to first of all start out with a little bit of just uh, quick bullet points here. Uh, first of all, we do have a Red Cross blood drive on June 30th, which is Tuesday. I think it's three weeks from yesterday, from 12.30 to 5.30. And I checked today. We have 27 spots available, so if you are interested, you can simply go to our website at Prince of Peace and click on the volunteer button, and then right away, the first thing you'll see is the Red Cross blood drive, and you can click on that, and then you'll have to just get to our blood drive that we have, which is, again, June 30th. You can type that in, and it'll get you there, and it'll show you all the spots that are available. So. I'm hoping that we can fill this up like we did a, uh, a couple months ago and that we can make sure we take care of those who are in need by giving part of ourselves to help them. I wanted to just give a quick update about the number of masks that have been made uh, by people in this parish to help others. We've had, I know it's way over 1,400. It's probably over 1,500 now, and they're still coming in. So... I am, for anybody who has taken the time and the effort and used their talents to make these masks to, to help people, and especially people who walk in, we have masks in our office for people who walk in and don't have them. Um, you've made a huge difference. So I'm so appreciative of all your efforts, and thank you. It, it shows me what people in this parish will do. Uh, I am... You know, it's just overwhelming. When we first started this, we were hoping if we could get 500 to 700, we would just, it would be great. And we've more than doubled that. So uh, thank you again to everyone who has helped and continues to help. Um, we have traditionally rung the bells here at noon every Sunday for the last six or seven weeks. And uh, we're going to do that Sunday, but I think what we're going to do is change it to 11 o'clock because we have 10 o'clock Mass. And if we have them at noon, people who have come to 10 o'clock aren't going to stick around for an hour or they're not going to come back at noon. So um, as an effort to make this more of a community event where we can still stay socially distanced and spend some time together. And I think, I'm hoping it'll be a nice day. We'll ring the bells at 11 o'clock on Sunday instead of at 10 and uh, Father was hearing confessions at 11 o'clock. Because we're going back to the Mass schedule, we're going to revert back to the old confession schedule, which is 3.30 on Saturday. So uh, starting on Saturday, we'll be at 3.30, and then that's, it'll be once a week at 3.30. So that, that will be the confession schedule going forward. And tomorrow night, Father usually would, was hearing confessions at 6. For the last couple of weeks, he hasn't seen anybody, so... 
he won't be here next or tomorrow night because he just hasn't had any company and I don't really want him to come out here and spend an hour by himself. So we've decided that um, he would just, we'll, we'll skip tomorrow night, but then the next opportunity for confessions will be 3.30 on Saturday. And again, it's a wonderful sacrament. So if you haven't experienced it in a while, please consider it because I think it'll help you. I'm, well, I know it'll help you. Um, just a, one note on faith giving. Uh, in the last three or four weeks, we've noticed that uh, faith giving has dropped off quite substantially uh, to about half or even less of what we normally need in a week to pay just the ongoing expenses here. And I'm not sure what to attribute that to, uh, but it, when we started out this crisis that we were in, I was concerned about our financial condition and you came through with flying colors. And I, the people I'm talking to right now, the 40 of you who watch the same thing every Wednesday with me, are probably not the people I need to talk to. Um, it's the people who are on the fringes, who attend Mass, not with a lot of frequency, but have, you know, maybe during the beginning of this pandemic were saying, I need to help my parish, and now have kind of wandered. So please pray for our parish. We, we do need to pick up our, our giving because we're starting to fall behind. It's not a crisis, but if it continues for any kind of stretch of time, it will be a problem. So I just wanted to mention that. And it's, again, probably not you who are watching, but it's the people who maybe aren't watching that we just, hopefully when we gather together, uh, we'll, we'll be able to pick that up in terms of faith giving. Okay, a couple items now just left. First of all, the picnic. Last night we had a meeting of the picnic committee and because of the state restrictions and because of the Bellevue restrictions, which basically follow what the state of Wisconsin is, is doing in terms of large gatherings, uh, we really can't have the picnic as we have had it because we can't have a lot of people on the grounds. It would be limited to 50 or less right now, which, I mean, obviously we have more volunteers. We had 500 volunteers last year, so 50 people wouldn't even come close to what we have for an event here. So what we have just scheduled at this point is the raffle, which we will have, and the prizes have... The, the grand prize hasn't increased, but the number of prizes has increased for this year. So the prize bucket has increased by $5,000. We have increased the price to $25 a ticket. Um, the tickets will be available here this weekend. We cannot mail them by law to you, but there will be a, a packet with your name on it that will be available in the gathering area. So if you pick it up, I'm going to ask you, to please either buy them yourself or sell them. We need to sell, we're going we're gonna to print 3,000 tickets and we need to sell all 3,000. Last year we had about 800 left over. That can't happen this year because we are going to make so much less on this picnic that we have in the past. Um, so we're going to really have to depend on the raffle to be the, the main source of revenue for this event. So I'm going to ask you if, you if you do take tickets that you either buy them or you sell them and bring them back to the office you know, as soon as you can because we can't sell them the day of the event. We're going to have to sell them before. So it's really going to be imperative that if you want to buy tickets, great. But if you don't, then you, know, you can even tell people in the office, I'm not interested in these. You can have them back and then we'll try to sell them in other places. But that's going to be critical. Um, we're also going to have Buya drive a drive-through for Buya, so we're going to make the Buya like we have in the past, and we'll sell it by the bucket. So if you're really interested in that, and I know a lot of people are, that won't be an issue. But we are hoping, we're still hoping, that there will be clearance from the village of Bellevue to have a picnic, and even if it comes as late as, you know, the middle to 20th of July or so, 
uh, the committee last night pledged that they could still pull this off. So we're kind of in a holding pattern in terms of the entire picnic, the car show, uh, the food, all of that, just to see if the state will open up by then. If it does, we will do our very best to get this to happen on August 9th. Um, so we'll continue to update you. And if things change, um, even if it's late in the game, hopefully we can still get this done. If it doesn't change, then it's nothing that we can really do because the village is saying that we can't have a large gathering. They won't, we'll, they won't give us a permit to do that. So we're kind of at their mercy at this point. And certainly we want to make sure that we take care of everybody's health. So we would want to be make sure that we're, we've got a lot of sanitation materials out there if the picnic is able to happen. So we'll, we'll keep you updated and we'll be prayerfully hoping that this can still happen on August 9th. Yeah, I had so much fun last year. It was the most fun I've had in one day in a long time. It was great to see so many people and so many volunteers that were so passionate about what they were doing. So hoping we can get this out, but we're still in a holding pattern for the most part. The raffle, however, is going to be critical. So please support that raffle if you can. Well, one last thing here, and that's obviously that we're going back to the Mass this weekend. You, um, we did a mass mailing. It was sent out, it went out on Monday, and I, people were calling today saying they had received a letter in the mail. So hopefully, if you were a member of this parish, you've received a letter today. And if not, you better receive one tomorrow. Uh, so it's gone out, and it's going to have all the details as to what is happening. But again, just a quick refresher. We're going back to the Original mass schedule, so 4.30 Saturday, 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. We're also going to add 6 p.m. on Sunday evening, at least uh, briefly, to see what happens. If we don't have much participation at 6 o'clock mass, then we will probably delete it pretty quick. Uh, first of all, Father has to make an additional trip out here and to have everything on and operational and have volunteers, ushers, security people here for a handful of people really isn't going to make sense. So we're going to just see how things go. So for the very short run, four masses, but for sure we'll have three masses going forward just like we always have. Um, you will have your temperature taken as you enter. We, masks are strongly recommended but not required. We know some people struggle with wearing masks. The 8 o'clock mass on Sunday morning, we'll, we'd like to reserve that for people who are 65 or over or have medical conditions that they're compromised and would still like to be here but would feel safer with their own quote-unquote group of people. What you will see when you enter here is that um, there will be a pew available, and then there will be two pews uh, taped off, and then a pew available, and then two pews, and so on. If you come with your family, obviously you can sit together or anybody that you're living with. If you come by yourself, then you'll have to social distance. And our capacity is 245. I, based on our attendance for the last two weekends, I guess I don't see that as a problem, unfortunately. I wished it would be, but... I don't see that happening. I think people are still being very cautious, which is understandable. But if, uh, if we would exceed 245, um, we may have to ask you to come back later. So, um, you know, we didn't have a sign-up. We didn't do this by alphabet. Some parishes are doing that. We have a really large facility here in terms of uh, churches in the diocese. So, I think we'll be okay. And, uh, but if we're not, um, we'll try to fix things real quickly. So this is the first weekend in 12 weeks that we've been together for the Mass. So I'm really, really excited to see people sitting here versus <laughs> nobody and an iPad. We're going we're gonna to still live stream the Sunday Mass. At, at, we're going to do the, the 4.30 on Saturday evening is what we're going to live stream. So that will be the Mass that will be live and then it'll be available the rest of the weekend. 
um, because there are people who are just going to simply not want to come to be safe, and we understand that. So as long as there isn't an obligation <clears throat> by Bishop Ricken to uh, attend the Mass for the weekend, the Sunday obligation, we'll live stream that s at Mass Saturday evening at 4.30. Once the obligation is back in place, then we'll tape it, and we'll show it later, but it won't be available Saturday or Sunday. So it'll be available during the week. Now, for those of you who come to Mass during the week, we're going to return to that schedule as well. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7.30 a.m. And if my wonderful director producer here can get up in the morning, um, we'll live stream that as well. So that is the plan, is we're going to go back to our old schedule. We're going to go back to our old Sunday schedule with the addition of the 6 o'clock Sunday p.m. Mass and back to our old daily schedule, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 7.30. It's been a privilege to be with you every day um, for those Masses up to this point, but it's also been a heartbreak because not seeing people here to celebrate what is the crux of our faith has been really difficult. If I can encourage you to come this weekend, I'll do, by, I'll do it by saying this. Deacon Bill has prepared the homily for this weekend. Now, it's probably the best weekend for any homilist to, to uh, be able to preach. And I'm glad that Deacon Bill has that opportunity. He has been here the longest. He has been the fixture in this parish for Lord knows how long. So, I'm glad he has that opportunity, and I'm sure that the words that God gives him to say this weekend will be heartfelt by all of you. So hopefully that'll be some encouragement for you to be here as well, and maybe just to be part of your family again. I think that that's what I'm looking forward to more than anything, is that we're just going to be back together instead of even worshiping separately. That's not what being a church is about. It's about being together. Church is the people. It's not the facility. It's the people. And when we're together, we're the church. When we're apart, we're still the church, but it's not the same as being together. So I'm so excited about this weekend. I probably won't sleep Friday night because I'm going to be too excited to sleep. But I uh, think that's what I, I can say just in a nutshell for what's going to be happening. And again, that letter should be to you today or tomorrow but it should have most of the details. If you do have questions, please call our office and we'll be able to help you there, answer any questions that you have. The people on this staff have worked incredibly hard during this pandemic, from the beginning of it to right now. We are one of the few parishes that has never closed our doors. We have stayed open. We've kept the church open every day during the pandemic for people to just come and spend time with Jesus, reflect in prayer. We've had our office open for normal hours every day during this pandemic. They have done an incredible job under incredibly difficult conditions. So when you see them in there, please thank them for all the work that they've done because um, they were serving you. Not, they weren't serving me or anybody else. They were serving you. You were, they were serving their parish and serving God. So they certainly deserve your praise for what, all that they've done. Well, I am hopeful that I'll see you this weekend. I'm starting to uh, lose it here a little bit. But that's how, that's how much this means to me. And uh, I'm hoping it means that much to you. Being able to experience Jesus together um, will be such a wonderful event. And I'm looking forward to it. I hope that you are, and if, and if you are too uncomfortable being here, I certainly understand. We all do. And we'll pray for you as well. We, we pray for each other. But let's, as I've said all along, take care of yourselves first. Take care of your family. Take care of everyone that you run into in this community that you respect them by doing the best you can to be as hygienically clean as possible. I don't know if that's a, the correct term, but 
let's just take care of each other. And again, I hope to see many of you this weekend. I'm sure the people who are watching right now, I'm likely will see, but hopefully other people who are maybe not even clued into what's going on here will see, receive that letter and be able to, to be here this weekend as well. So let's pray that we can come back together as a family and stay safe and stay healthy. And may Almighty God bless you and all of your family and all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.